Hey everybody, thanks for joining us again. Today we're going to talk about the story of a woman who suffered a stroke, the late great Representative John Lewis, and Jacob's epic wrestling match. A scripture reading from the book of Genesis, from chapter 32, beginning with the 22nd verse. Hear the word of God. The same night he got up and took his two wives, his two maids, and his eleven children, and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. He took them and sent them across the stream, and likewise everything that he had. Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he struck him on the hip socket, and Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then he said, Let me go, for the day is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, What is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then the man said, You shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have striven with God and with humans, and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, Please tell me your name. But he said, Why is it that you ask my name? And there he blessed him. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, For I have seen God face to face, and yet my life is preserved. The sun rose upon him as he passed Penuel, limping because of his hip. This is the word of God for you, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let me start by saying that I do not think that all trauma is a blessing. I don't believe that all things happen for a reason. What I do believe is that some things, not all things, but some things happen for a reason. I also believe that all things are redeemable through Jesus Christ. Each person needs to sort out which is which for themselves. Having said that, there are numerous examples in the Bible where blessing and trauma are intertwined. Jesus dying on the cross would be exhibit A for this proposition. Paul being temporarily struck blind would be another example. But sometimes tragedy is just tragedy. Rachel weeping for her children would be an example of this proposition. Let's take, for example, if someone tells me that they or someone they love has suffered a stroke. I will never start out by saying, that's great, congratulations, tell me how that's been a blessing. But that's not to say that a stroke automatically excludes blessing. Dr. Jill Bolte-Taylor is a Harvard-trained neuroanatomist. In other words, she's a brain scientist. At age 37, she woke up one morning and started noticing peculiar things about how she was perceiving and experiencing her world. She was going in and out of thinking that she was one with the world and that something was seriously wrong and that she needed help. In one of the moments where she thought something was wrong, she realized she was having a stroke. Dr. Taylor says that one of her first thoughts was, This is so cool! How many brain scientists have the opportunity to study their own brain from the inside out? I guess it's all in how you look at things, isn't it? As a neuroanatomist, she was able to think and name the structures in her brain as they were failing. As her condition worsened and she attempted to call for help, she found that she was no longer able to remember phone numbers or recognized what even numbers even looked like. And when she was finally able to place a call, all speech sounded to her like a golden retriever trying to talk, garbled and unintelligible. She did finally manage to get help. She lost consciousness and woke up in a hospital room. Early in her recovery, she had an experience of thinking that she had found nirvana she was deeply touched by this experience that could only be described as spiritual. While she was having this experience, the brain scientist in her reasoned that if she could experience this while she was alive, anyone could. 
So in the middle of the hospital, in the aftermath of a serious brain injury, Dr. Taylor says to herself about suffering the effects of a stroke, what a gift. This thought that she had been given something special and that perhaps she could find a way to allow other people to experience this positive state of mind through her study of the brain motivated Dr. Taylor to recover. Her recovery would take eight years. For Dr. Taylor, trauma and blessing were intertwined. Jacob, like Dr. Taylor, found blessing and trauma intertwined. Jacob had an authentic encounter with God, but that blessing left him with a limp for the rest of his life. It seems to me that one of the common elements in the story of Jacob and the story of Dr. Taylor is hope. Jacob had the hope that God was now connected to his life in a sure and certain way, even if he couldn't fully understand the mystery of what had happened to him. Jacob knew that he had been blessed and that his relationship with God had been sealed in a way that could never be undone. Dr. Taylor had the hope that she would be able to spread the good that she experienced in the midst of a stroke and improve prospects for other people. The more I reflect on Jacob, the more I realize that hope can sustain us as we limp through this pandemic. I'm not enjoying this pandemic. I wish it hadn't happened. I'd rather not have to deal with any of it. Nevertheless, in the midst of the pandemic, I have a hope that God might be changing me for good, for the good. I hope that there is something in this experience that burns away some chaff, that aligns my heart to what's important, and that strengthens my character, even though I wouldn't wish this experience on anyone. This experience is going to change how we all live for a long time. And what gets me through that reality is the biblical record that God's blessings are not limited by hardships. I don't believe God celebrates the loss of life this pandemic has caused, but neither do I believe God is powerless over it either. I know, and you know, from way before this virus came into being, that God blesses us even in the midst of the worst circumstances, even if it takes us years before we recognize it. Even now, God is forming and shaping us, sanctifying and perfecting us, so that this virus isn't simply a meaningless random event. God makes it possible that we can limp and be blessed at the same time. We can cry out and have hope at the same time. The life of Representative John Lewis has illustrated this good news for us. He was ridiculed. He had laws drafted against the color of his skin. He was nearly beaten to death. And yet he lived out the conviction that God loves everyone. He cried out and had hope at the same time. He had hope that God was at work in this world, redeeming systemic racism and blessing those who bore the hardship of the good fight. As hard as these days are, we are also in the process of experiencing a blessing. Some of you see it even now. Some of us might take longer to recognize it. And neighbor might experience it differently from neighbor. But after all is said and done, we will know the goodness and the blessing of God and be better equipped to share God's light and love in Jesus Christ for all people, even if we might limp while doing so. Thanks be to God. Amen.